Good morning, everyone on My Time TV. Sandra Meehan here. And yes, yesterday was normally the day I do my show with, uh, not yesterday, Wednesday is normally the time that we do Conscious Chat with Sandra Meehan. But unfortunately, due to internet problems on my, at my end, I couldn't bring my amazing guests on um, for you to listen to. So we've decided to do it today, which we can do over here. So Barbara Long, I'm going to say, Longay, Longay um, is our guest um, today, all the way from Tasmania. Um, so she's moved to Tasmania seven years ago from just outside New York. So today we're going to be discussing how to thrive and just not survive in this market. Well, yeah, I'll just let me introduce um, Barbara to you and a little bit about her. Um, so Barbara has transformed her life and business more than once and is now living and working remotely from the middle of the forest overlooking the ocean in Tasmania, Australia. Uh, Barbara sold her wine consulting business. Oh, boy, wine consult. Woman after my own heart here. As everyone knows, Sandra likes a good glass of vino. Um, her wine consulting business after 35 years in the wine industry to start a meditation and retreat centre and find a new way of life. Barbara currently works with successful business owners looking to grow their business to the next level while transforming life, not just for their shareholders, but for their employees, stakeholders in the community as well. Her pet project, pun intended, is to help rescue dogs feel at home in their new forever home. Now, this is going to be an amazing chat. I can feel it already. So let me bring Barbara up. Welcome. How are you? Good. How are you doing? We finally made it. We finally got it worked out and sorted and it's been a couple of months, you know, and yeah, so here we are and all the way down in Tasmania, what we like to say, just right down the bottom of Australia where it's cold. Yeah. Yeah. We had a chilly night last night, hopefully our last frost of the season. But what's really funny to me is all the Aussies think Tasmania is so cold. And I came here because it's so much warmer than where I came from. So we almost never get snow unless you're at the top of a mountain somewhere. And it's just nice, beautiful, cool weather. I just love it. Well, for, for, for me, it would be cold because I live in Queensland. <laughs> so, yeah, for you, it would be freezing. I would be freezing. <laughs> I, I've been to New Zealand a couple of times and uh, I won't, I've won't. i always go in there towards the end of their summer i won't go there in winter because i know that i'll freeze and i don't have any clothes either for that that's that would keep me um warm but i've always wanted to come to tassie because there's um some beautiful wineries down there plus there's also amazing food and a food trail and um yeah and looking forward to hearing a little bit more about your meditation um retreat um, that's uh, that sounds amazing and, a, and an awesome spot to have it where, where you've got it. So I'm going to ask you one question, Barbara, which isn't on your list of questions. So this is just obviously um, Tasmania has been your choice to, to, to live in, but yeah. as a wine consultant, um, what would have been the most memorable wine that you drank? I got to tell you, um, to me, wine has always been not just about what you're putting in your mouth. It's about who you're sharing it with. It's about that connection to the food that's there at the moment, the environment that you're there, the people you're with. And especially it's, it's also even about the sense of time and the history of that wine. Is this something new and exciting or is this something that has been, someone's been making it wine at that particular place for hundreds or thousands of years? So it all comes to me to form that aspect of an all encompassing view of what that wine is. Cause I can tell you it absolutely affects your memory of that wine and your enjoyment of that wine. You know, I remember seeing people all the time, they'll go to some little spot in Italy for their honeymoon and they come back and uh, they're saying this is the best wine they've ever had. And it's like, well, it's because it was your honeymoon. It could actually be the worst wine you have ever had <laughs> when you're in some other situation and then it's in a bottle, it's traveled thousands and thousands of miles. But at that moment, in that time, it was the best bottle you've ever had. 
So I look at those really, really memorable occasions where there was a really deep connection. Uh, and it's not just necessarily with the spouse, but it could be just, like I said, that amazing sense of history that, that can accompany how that wine was made, who made it, what was their intent when they made it. Because I can tell you, you can taste that in a wine, the intention at the outset of what did they want to do when they made that wine. Yeah, and that's um, that's a great answer. And it's about being, it's, as I was talking to you before we went live, it's about being present. And when we're present, everything <clears throat> can taste good because we're in that moment of being yeah. connected to, to the people, the food, and, and all of that. And I think wine, and I know sometimes myself, wine's just a bottle of wine that you drink. You have a few drinks of a night time or, or whatever. But the, my best memories are when I've shared a, a great meal with, with people and the and you're so right, the experience and the memories and that and um, whether it's been a $5 bottle of wine or a high-end bottle, it, yeah. it, is, it is always the experience. And uh, I've lived all over Australia and um, I've had many great meals and, and many bottles of wine I've drunk with many friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we always look back and go, do you remember you know, such and such, or do you remember that Christmas where we did this or, or, or that and we had that bottle of wine? And, yeah, it's always um, always around that. And I think it's it's become, I think, we, we can just drink wine now for the sake of drinking it and not being present with, with everything that it's that we're connected with. Yeah, then with. it's just alcohol. And you might as well, and I tell people, you might as well just go straight to tequila or go straight to some hard liquor because if you're not paying attention to it, there's no point in in drinking wine even in my in my opinion if you're not yeah. going to drink something that you're going to pay attention to and appreciate just go get you can get drunk much faster with some other things <laughs> that's that's awesome so um today let's so, so having done that let's get on with the show so your the topic of choice that you came up with is um how to thrive and not just survive in this market and it's a great time to be talking about this because we are in current the the current um craziness on our on our beautiful planet the change that we're all going through um we we all need to be able to thrive rather than just um just survive so how do you um how did you get started in meditating in the first place you know it's funny because the first experience i had with meditation i was 22 years old and i had I had gone to paris to be an au pair so that i could learn french and that's why my name is Longay. It's a e accent aigu at the end. Uh, but anyway, I met someone who had just come back from a 10 day silent meditation retreat. And I said, that sounds awesome. I've been wanting to learn how to meditate. And I don't actually advise people to start a 10 day silent meditation retreat. <laughs> there are way, way easier ways to start. But that actually was my first experience. And and even a number of years, I'd go to it, fall back off of it, not do it, come back. And it's still in my mind, in my memory, those experiences from that first 10 days of silent meditation still are with me almost daily. I'll get a flashback of something that I experienced during that time. And it's just, it's it's really shaped my life um, from that point on, whether I was consciously meditating or not. Now it's very much a part of my daily life, and I highly encourage people to use this form of connecting to your highest self on a daily basis to help reach a higher state of your own potential. And when you say silent meditation, for those people that don't understand it, what actually is silent meditation? So what that involved, that was a, a Buddhist Vipassana meditation that I had done, uh, was actually someone speaks to you someone's guiding the meditation and we would do an hour on and an hour off from 4 a.m in the morning till 10 or 11 o'clock at night and you could interact with people without talking to them you you weren't allowed to talk during meals you were allowed to read you were allowed to walk around the gardens and that was it so you had to learn how to come to grips with all of those thoughts that everybody has and learn how to deal with them because when you were sitting in a guided meditation, someone else was walking you through the process of here is a here is what, what I'd like you to look at in your mind at this moment. When you weren't sitting there, 
you were still not able to talk to other people. So we, we don't realize how many inane things we use as words in our daily life. And all of a sudden, when you cut out those words, you realize you can actually find much deeper meaning, even in just sharing a meal silently sitting next to somebody. And the connections with a lot of those people that I had that, that you know, I talked about that meditation, it was now 30 some years ago, um, were really significant in my life. And I still see these people and that warmth that can be felt without words. And it's, it's a massive transformation that can happen when you sit with yourself without using words. And how did it, um, like you, you've had a, had a big, um, massive career shift from the 35 years in the wine industry. Um, how did you master bringing the two of them together? <laughs> and that's actually what's happened with my business coaching because I was very successful in business for so many years working with my wine consulting business. And before that I had worked with a, uh, bring a wholesale, um, managing a wholesale business up from 13 million to $25 million in sales. And I got to tell you, every one of those is one bottle gets sold, you know? So that was, it was a lot of work and a lot of that expertise that I had on the business side. I realized that so many people, even like myself, who were looking for a higher level of consciousness, it doesn't mean that you don't still have a job or you still work or you still get paid to do things. You know, it's, it's now about how do you integrate that higher level for your own self into your world during the day, whether you still have a job or whether you have own a business, it's how do you make that significant? How do you create those sacred spaces during your normal, what you would call your normal day so that it's not, Oh, I'm over here and I meditate. And the rest of the time I'm insanely busy and crazy. It's learning to meld. You are one person. You have one life. It's learning to bring in that consciousness from a higher level into your daily life. Yeah, and and what I'd um, I, I, I'd like to just expand that in in business, we we see so many people. Uh, we're here. We look. We're seeing a lot of conscious conscious people that are in that are bringing their business more in, in into line it's not separate it's it's they're no. together so they're not spiritual when they're out of business this they're, they're, they're or, and and they're not just yeah. a business person um it's about bringing the two of them to, together so it, they complement each other so we're not in our ego in business and making um terrible awful um, decisions and treating people the wrong way that we do it but we do it in such a way that we show compassion and love but still manage our business and I think that's Absolutely. where a lot, a lot of people are struggling at the moment they don't know how to bring the two together what I'm seeing is that there is a lot of um, spiritual people and this was my, my, me as well that I, I struggled really hard in in in, in bringing that that balance in, in, into my business and, and using my head on a day-to-day -day basis or the masculine side of the do, 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 because I wanted to, to just flow. But in the corporate world, because I've also worked in the corporate world as well, yeah. that um, it's balancing that 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 heart-centred, that, that heart um, with your, your, your corporate job because you, you, we're trained or we're, we're brainwashed, whatever you want to call it, that it's just it's all it's it's just do 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 and treat everybody like a number. And I think as we move through this um, this energy that we're moving through, we're going to come we're coming into a, um, an amazing space of where we will do business through the heart, but still connected to our head. And it's we it's about bringing the two together. So there's Absolutely. a win -win situation for all. Yeah, I I agree with you 100 percent because. I grew up also thinking it was either or either I was doing my yoga and meditating or I was busy doing business and working and it's not it's and 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 how do you how do you create a space of calm in the middle of chaos inside yourself how do you how do you create more abundance for your business so that you can share more abundance with those around you um, these aren't separate things None of us are separate. 
and and I also think it's it's good for business owners. I'm, we're we're going down some some rabbit hole here at the moment. Um, that it's really important for business owners to recognise that when we do step into our when we really do open our our hearts and our vibration up to a to 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 our spiritual selves, we don't because we're all spiritual. But once we become aware of that, that we treat our staff with compassion, and we realise that they're a some of their decisions aren't necessarily going against ours. It's just where they are in their life. And the more that we can open our employees up to, to, to understand that it may not be something that they're doing at work. It could be something that's happening at home or in their childhood that they're carrying. As a, as a conscious business leader, um, it's really important for us to be aware and to help flow that through, to be that, um, that leader. To, to, to filter it down. So many business people think it starts at the bottom and the top doesn't have to do anything. <laughs> I agree with you because it's, I think a lot of people see employees as kind of an object. They're a line on the budget sheet, you know, or there, there's someone there to get something done. And, and the reality is, is that the more fulfilled your employees are, like I, I see very directly with, with our employees that the, we work a lot on those, personal self-benefit issues, even though none of them who work for me now are conscious meditators. Um, we'll, we might do Qigong in the morning as a practice. I'll say, we're going to take a break. And right now we're just going to do some breathing. Um, and it's adapting for each individual employee. What is it that would help them be a better person? Because it is documented how much more productive they can be then because if they're not stressed if they're not feeling overwhelmed and part of that also comes back to how you manage your business and saying do you have the systems in place so that all of those things can happen and so that the flow can happen because the flow doesn't just fall from the sky the flow yeah. is something that we start and create and then we run with it but it is something that also needs to be created so that that processes are in place to make it all easy then that's that's so true so why do you say that health and happiness is your is the greatest wealth because uh, uh, I, I believe health and happiness is our greatest wealth it's not actually our physical wealth um that's our, our the greatest thing where we're remembered on this planet um by by what we have um what we have done not what we've achieved I agree with you. And a lot of people confuse that, particularly business owners. And I see today you still find everybody's just talking about how do you get more leads or how do you that's not really what you want in life. And I think if there's anything that people have learned from COVID and many people have learned this and many people are still waiting to learn, finish understanding this lesson, is this really is a chance to say what really is important to you, your health. If you're not healthy, you you got nothing. OK, if you're buried six feet under, there is nothing you take with you. OK, so a lot of people have come to a greater realization of what is important to them. You know, if you keep saying that, yes, your spouse or your partners or your family is important to you, but they're last on your list of people that you spend time with and last on your list of people that you actually share fun times with. Um, COVID has forced families to come together or break apart and understanding what we say are our goals and what we're actually doing has often for i'm going to say for 90 percent of the population the opposite we say we want this but we're doing something completely different and COVID has forced people to if you say your health and your happiness are important you're being forced to learn how to be happy no matter what's happening around you and knowing that the happiness actually does come from inside. It's a choice. It's not It's not mandated by some government or some center link payment that may or may not be coming through, right? It's a choice to be happy. Oh, exactly. Uh, I, that, that, I just love how you explain that. And, it's, and it, it, it is right. COVID, whatever you want to call it, whatever we want to call it and everyone's got a different opinion on it. Um, it. It is bringing families together. It is making us go inside. As you said, with your med, you know, quiet meditation, we, we can go inside and start to purge out what isn't working for us. 
and yeah. we, we've got this choice at the moment and a lot of people look for happiness okay when i get this job i'll be happy when i um, earn this amount of money i'll be happy when i find love i'll be happy but happiness starts with inside and so does health you know we're yeah, not and it's really forced a lot of people to come to that understanding and i think i think we're not through this yet because i think there's still a lot of people who need to come to that understanding and a lot of business owners have gotten it because they're saying oh my god now i'm not traveling all over the world on an airplane a hundred billion hours a week i can actually create happiness and create productivity and and help people from where i am i can spend more time with my family i can i can bake my bread and make my kombucha and i can do all those things that i said i didn't have time for before i can do those things for my own self that people have been making shortcuts and i think we're really at this cusp i think there's still clearly a few more people who need to just sit calmly with where we're at because it's going to be like this until it's not oh, and one day it won't be like this but I what people can learn right now is to just accept that this is where we are right now and relax into that oh for me i've never been more at peace than what i am right now i think this is this has been a uh, i've had the most peaceful eight or nine months it's just like <laughs> okay we'll just take each day as it comes it's about having gratitude and i know there's a lot of people a lot of businesses that people that have lost businesses and and things and you know there, there's domestic violence there's all these sorts of things but also as we go through all that it's showing us that that we come out the other side of it and we're going to be okay it's it's forcing us to make choices is this what i continually want or do i want something different so yeah you know, exactly and, exactly because there's only to me there's only so many hours of netflix you can binge on at some point you have to look at your own self in the mirror and say what is it that i want yeah. what is it that i want and and that's where and that's what i did probably 10 15 years ago when i um left my left my my husband i woke up one morning at 49 and just went oh i don't know who i am what do i want what does sandra want because i'd become everything in my corporate job and you know there was there was many parts of me rather than being whole i was this person for that i was that person and i i needed to bring it all in together and find and find me and i think this what's happening now through COVID, many people are actually finding themselves and yeah. I, you know, we've all got parts of the sewer or the swamp or whatever you want to call it that we don't like about ourselves it's about accepting it, it's about but as we move forward and helping humanity and I think for for what I'm seeing there's a lot more people actually helping each other yeah and I think that's that's wonderful because we we've got we've lost ourselves from that um, and you'd know by doing your retreats from that point of connection connection within but connects true true connection with with other people so it's forcing us to be present even with our children um, because technology has taken has taken over in, in a lot of things tv um, we're too busy at work i know myself in my corporate life the hours that i put in only yeah. to be trenched at the end of it because I was just a number. So it didn't mean the more hours I put in that I was safe. It's just that, that you know, we, we get so tied up in our own importance and that's our ego. Um, yeah. What's happening at the moment is actually helping us to, to, to work through our ego and come back into our true authentic self. Yeah, I agree with you. And, you know, and a lot of people I know were always wishing, I wish I didn't have the commute. I wish I didn't have to sit in the car at those traffic lights to get to work. I wish I didn't have to rush out of the out of the house in the morning without breakfast. I wish, I wish, I wish. And they've gotten a wish. There's no more commuting. <laughs> commuting. So here's your wish. Now what are you going to do with it? Now what are you going to make of your life? <laughs> so, so, so true. So what do you mean by a conscious capitalist? Because so, I, I personally believe that we can be conscious and we can actually be successful and have everything we want. Yeah, so my ideal client is someone who is already very successful, is already probably donating a lot of money to charities, and it's helping them make their business apply that same principle that I know they believe in, applying it down to their employees and and adding ways to increase their profitability so they can donate even more but making it a conscious effort and actually 
declaring what they're willing to pledge to their community and to philanthropy so that everybody is committed to that same goal and it allows them then to have an even greater role in in their community so it's looking at their success in a way that's not just their success but the whole community can raise at the same time that they're raising their own um money energy they can raise the spiritual energy of of many many more hundreds of thousands of people around them wow and that's so in line with that with the new energy that's that that's coming in where it's about being of service rather than service to self it's about being yeah. of service to others and um that's that's very much aligned with the the, the 5d energy that um we we as um as a species and as um, mother earth moves into that 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 energy that's that is the new earth yeah absolutely and i think there's i know a lot of entrepreneurs who are almost embarrassed that they've made so much money and they're giving it away and as opposed to being embarrassed by it it's it's being able to celebrate it because it's not bad that someone makes money. It's good that some people make money and it's good that they share their abundance of information and money and kindness and compassion. And that's really what I work with these business owners in how do they bring that to their whole team. And in fact, it makes their whole team even more productive when you can make the employees feel better and when you can share and create that system, that structure in place so that everybody is at their best. Because we can't take our money with us. You know, we're, we're all born with no money. We don't, we come, we, we're all born with no clothes on. Yeah. And we're all born with, you know, we, and we can't take our money with us. And yet so many people want to hold on tightly and they judge themselves by, by, by how much money they've earned or how much they've got, in, got into the bank and how much they can take can take from others whereas if we flip the switch around and went how much can i give others yeah and you know that for me I, my my vision of of planet earth is to see nobody homeless and nobody starving because we, there's enough money on this planet that no no human being should should be starving and no human being should I not agree with you yeah I'm absolutely yeah and you know, that starts to, that we could go down a whole nother rabbit hole with that, but I won't. <laughs> well, there's a great example. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, an American named Chuck Feeney. He's, uh, his story is, I don't know if he's technically the person who's given away the most money on the planet, but he would be very close. He just signed uh, an agreement to dismantle completely and finish up his philanthropic trust but that was after they'd given away $8 billion with a B, not, not a million, not 8 million, $8 billion. And he started in 1984, he had, was with co-founder of a company called Duty Free Shops that I'm sure you, in every airport, yes. you see, they've, they've had incredible success all over the planet. And what he had done was he gave all of his shares to the trust in 1984, and from the very minute he, he set it up, so all the earnings of that business were still contributing to the trust, right? So the business was highly successful. He said, I'm going to create a system to create the greatest impact my money can make. And that's what he did. I mean, he went in and he gave millions and millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars to Vietnam to say, we're going to create a healthcare system in an entire country. You know, and he said, where can my money make the biggest impact? And number one thing is to say money is just energy. So making more money is just more energy. Yeah. And he understood that very well. And his goal was to say, I don't want just another trust that goes on forever and ever because it's not about his name. Most of those donations were done anonymously, which is also I can't I can't express how grateful I am that someone's ego was so not wrapped up in that it wasn't even about his name giving it. And he set a date limit when he created it in 1984. He said, by 2020, this will be closed. We will give away every single dime. And I, it's just the most amazing story ever. You know, and so he's my real aspiration to say, how much more can we create to be able to give more and make a bigger and bigger impact around the planet? Yeah, and we're, and we're all we can all give um, we can all give something or um, and I think uh, uh, 
I think with so much sometimes, like you said, our ego can get in, into the way. There's there's trust funds, there's this and there's that, and you see people's names splash splash though over, yeah. which then creates an ego from uh, from another level underneath that. Oh, re we received money from this foundation or that foundation, but when it's secret, nobody knows where it's coming from. Yeah. So it's keeping everything you know on, 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 on a level playing field. And, and, and that's, you know, because it, it's coming from here and we don't need to be recognised. I think it's a little bit like um, Facebook and YouTube and that where we get so tied up in how many subscribers or this person's got that many subscribers and so they must know everything and, you know, this person has only got a few. So, you know, they can't know anything and i think when we get when we get over ourselves and we just do share our share our message as i like to call it share our shit that we're here to do and yeah. um and 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 help reach as many people because you know if you can help just because someone's got a hundred and something thousand subscribers doesn't mean that there's that you can help any of them. You know, one person might hear your message the same as one person might actually understand the message or do something with the message that you give if someone's only got 10 subscribers. Um, but we we tend to, um, to as, as a lot of entrepreneurs and that, they, they, they think they sit up above everybody else and it's about look at me, look at me. And it's it's time all of us come into our heart and go, don't look at us, look at the planet, look down at a, at, a, at a different level and say, this is how we can help change the planet because we're all here at this time. You, me, everybody else, whether we're entrepreneurs or whether we're just everyday people or we've got money or we haven't got money, we're all here to create a change at this time. And this is why we're all here in 2020 to, to, to be the seeds of change for future generations. In, um, so they have a better they have a better world to live in. Yeah, I agree with you. And and age really is no boundary. Uh, I had a conversation uh, maybe about six weeks ago with a 10 year old who is one of the wisest humans I've ever met. A 10 year old. <laughs> Just like, she's got her own podcast. She started her own business at two and a half years old. <laughs> <laughs> just go like you can't make this stuff up <laughs> yeah because we didn't come, we didn't come here to be poor we didn't come here to be we didn't come here to, to to live a nine to five life yeah it's what we've been born into or what we've been conditioned to but we start to change those conditions and change the way we do things like we are currently doing with COVID we're like oh well yeah I, as you said fathers are saying well I like being home with my kids I'm being more interactive with my children and, and mum's uh, can do that and we can check where you know schools are shut down and parents are, are homeschooling their kids and teaching their kids a, a little bit differently but they're also seeing where their children aren't up to you know they need help in this area or that area as there's a there's a whole host of things that we're we're currently going through but the one yeah. question I want to ask you is why yeah. do you think so many spiritual people struggle financially or don't believe that they can be or should be financially abundant? You know, I think it's a question that I see happening over and over again, whether the question is asked out loud or not, because I see the example of so many spiritual people who have this uh, very negative reaction to money or even the word capitalist, which is why I kind of use it because it's it's a bit charged, like, oh, that's bad, you know, like put the put the cross up and keep it away because I think they're not understanding that that money is just energy and that even though we may have had many lifetimes where the vows of poverty and and a whole series of things that said you could only be spiritual or you were only that um, I think it's people who haven't gotten through their own past life history to be able to say it actually is okay. Not only is it okay to make money, it's beneficial to the entire community and to your employees when you do it in a conscious way. So it's not only not a negative, it's a huge positive to be able to give more, make a bigger impact and be able to share your story, which there are many, many people need to hear your story. And I think there's there's a there's a lot there's when you actually look at and you subvert you look at the whole world, there's very, very few successful, I'm going to just talk in the spiritual industry, 
um, not in it, like there's conscious entrepreneurs, um, but those that work in this spiritual um, help self area, there's very few few of them that have actually stepped up and are making, and that includes myself, and are making a shitload yeah. of money. Yeah, and it's and it and there's a huge resistance to accepting the money. You know, I have my partner, for example, is still in that stage where she doesn't want to talk about it. It's still considered bad. And we're, you know, you just keep working through one more layer of that onion to, to work to work through that because accepting money is OK. It's OK to accept the money, <laughs> you know, it's OK to get over this because it's OK to use it. It's OK. People know that it's OK to give learning that it's okay to receive is a huge huge challenge for i'm going to say 99 percent of the spiritual people i meet so it's the other side of that coin you people can't give to you if you can't receive so learning how to receive it's love it's money it's energy it's the same thing it's all the same thing and um would you say it's because that um money it, it's a conscious block around that People think money's evil because, like, money, money, power, and sex have controlled our planet for a long, long time. And there's a lot of corruption that sits with money. And I think yeah. it's a, it, 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 it's that whole vibration of if if I have money, am I going to lose? And this is something that I personally had to work through. So this is why I'm sharing this: is that will I jump into my ego and forget what I'm here to do? And that was something that I had to personally work through. That um, I may have done that in other lives and been successful and, and, and allowed the money to control me. But in this yeah. lifetime, I know that that's, uh, I, I had to work through it because it's just like, because you see it with so many people and we're like, we don't want to be like that. And we focus on what we don't want to be rather than what we want to be. And I think you've, you've hit the nail on the head is that if somebody's looking at keep continuously repeating what I don't want to be, you bring that on. And there have been many, many instances in capitalism for over a hundred years were people who only gave when they had to. <laughs> they only built a railroad or a library when they had to. They didn't, it wasn't the intent from the outset to say, I'm gonna help my community, I'm gonna make more money to, to help more people. And I think the bringing the higher state of consciousness to your business is is very much a way to increase the health, wealth and happiness of everyone all around you. And in a much, much wider circle than you could even possibly imagine. And um, just just moving on, just just I'm just going to digress somewhere else because I'm really keen to talk about your spiritual um, retreat and meditation center and I know we've sort of just gone from there to some, but this is <laughs> really important Sorry. because this because uh, I know that you help businesses and if people want to yeah. go there and work through this you know why did you create what why did you go from such a corporate life to this amazing sort of life is is that to give back to people or was that a a decision that you'd had enough of the the busyness or no it was it was my personal journey in much the same way you talked about you woke up one morning and said i want to try something new my journey was was kind of the same way i i went on i was married my kids were in high school when um i decided i was going to go to machu picchu and on a, on a private journey, because my husband had, at the time, who was a triathlete, said, I'm going to run the triathlon in the Ironman in Brazil. And I said, I want to go to Brazil. And you can't go when I'm busy. And he says, well, I want to go. I'm going on this trip. And I said, well, if you're going on that trip, I'm going on my own trip. And so I booked a trip to Machu Picchu. And there I met the, the person who's now my new partner in life and in business, uh, Sue Christensen, who's one of the 13 grandmothers of Australia. And she's she owns 22 acres and on a very, very sacred site. And that was, you know, as they say, I said, I'm going to just try something completely <laughs> new, you know, divorced the husband, sold my business, sold the house. The kids had finished college by that point. And I said, I want to see what it feels like for me. So it was really for my personal journey and it's sharing my journey with other people. Um, 
And what's happened with COVID is because we had to shut everything down, um, one of the things we had been talking about doing before was making our meditation center more global online. And that's exactly what's happened. So we still have as many meditations, um, they're just online. You know, we haven't done in-person meditations. I shouldn't say this, we've done, we've been able to do one or two since then, but we, we've stopped all of the staying overnight and doing things for longer than a few hours. And it's um, it's been good for us uh, to be able to reach a much wider audience now. And with um, with your meditations, um, what 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 types of meditations are they? Uh, like, with I, your partner being one of, one of the yeah. thirteen um, um, grandmothers, and that was sort of like, oh wow, that's that's because uh, if um, that's that's amazing, and and like there would be a connection. I'm, I'm I'm just going to put this out there. I could be totally wrong. Um, there would be a connection there to the Palladians. There is um, this particular site is primarily goes back to an Atlantean connection um, and a Lemurian connection. And um, the Pleiades and the Syrians, there's a sun disk just off the coast. There's a whole lot of things happening in this particular spot that um, that she's needed to be here. And I'm now also one of the caretakers of this spot. And it's. And that's part of the reason why the it's been open and it's been closed. And so I think we can actually take care of this spot as earth keepers better almost if people don't physically come. So now we now we make, you know, essences and things like that. But you can participate and you can participate etherically and spiritually, but um, keeping it very pristine is is a massive part of what of what we do, I think, as earth keepers on the planet. Beautiful, beautiful. So your meditations, where, where do you take people or where do you guide them or what what can they expect if they do meditations with you? I mean, I I usually <laughs> run the silent sure. Yeah, I, I actually really like the concept of the silent meditations because I think it really, even we even just do one day silent meditation so that you come in in the morning, uh, you have a beautiful lunch and then you'll leave by four or five o'clock as a way for people to connect on a much deeper level very quickly. Um, we do a lot of guided meditations. We do healing meditations. We do, we do all kinds of things and we have a whole range of different um, healing modalities that we all work with. But it's when we're working one-on-one -on -one with a client, it's, it's what they need in particular. But like I said, my fondness is really for the longer term even if it's just you know six or seven hours of coming in with a theme of and being guided through not talking and and getting as deep inside as you possibly can and that was that's very much an atlantean thing am i correct <laughs> it seems to be nobody <laughs> knows for sure you know Nobody, know, yeah, nobody, nobody, knows, for sure, but nobody yeah. knows for sure but it was something that they would do to to, to cleanse and yeah, um, yeah, yeah I, I, like I said, I think that's what the earth is trying to tell humans. You really need to be quiet for a little bit and let go of all of your attachment to everything that was because it's all going to be brand new. And so just relax because it's happening. And the more you fight it, the worse it's going to hurt. Yeah, couldn't have put it any, <laughs> any, any, any better myself because we're going through an end of a cycle like we went through yeah. the end of a cycle in, in, in Lemuria, then we went through an end of the fall of Atlantis. Um, but what we're going through now that is the end of the Iron Age so we can come out into a much better because we were really, really spiritual in, Lem in, in Lemuria. So Absolutely. Very very light beings, um, everything was um, a luminescence and everything. So we're very, very spiritual there. And then we then we got heavier and heavier in density and became really and truly physical. And in Atlantis, we were highly, highly technology, so advanced, but yeah. we allowed that to, that's where we, the corruption and everything really came in and caused the fall of Atlantis and took us into this Iron Age where we're going now is into a highly technical technology, but also we're moving back into that high spiritual um, beings, which will take place over the next thousands of, of years. And it's it's really, really exciting to come out of this, this 
well, we've been living for five thousand, twenty six thousand. I, I, I can't put a put a figure on of years <laughs> yeah. of um, being suppressed and everything, and having our planet suppressed. Where now that's being opened up because there's people like you and your partner and so many others around the world that are opening up that fourth dens density um, grid that's been around the planet and kept us in where we can now bust through that and really truly be who we are in um, in physicality. Yeah, and there's no doubt that the new earth is being formed as we speak. And uh, like I said, it's you're either going with the flow or you're fighting it. And it's going to hurt if you keep fighting it because it's happening. <laughs> it's happening either way. But it's happening no matter what you decide to do. So you might as well jump on board and relax into this space. And it actually kind of reminds me of that first time that I had done that 10-day silent meditation because for me, what had happened when I did that is after the seventh day, I, I got very angry. And I was like, seven days? Seven days should be enough. How could I possibly need more than seven days? <laughs> And so it was just saying, you just better relax because it's going to be another day. Like if you want to survive another day, you got to just relax into it and let go of trying to control everything and let go of thinking, you know, everything, <laughs> you know. And so it feels exactly like what's happening today. If people let go and relax into this, it's going to be very easy because I see I've been able to transform our businesses in numerous ways to create new, better business than we had before. And I see people who have lost everything and haven't figured out where to start and they're miserable and they're and they're hitting the bottle or hitting the pub if it's open way too often. It's like that's that's not where you're going to find it. The answer is not in the bottom of the bottle. It's not there. You have to look somewhere else. I like the way you said control because we've. We, when we tightly hold on to on, on to control, um, we're, we're trying to force it. We're being um, really rigid, and yeah. um, but when we allow that control to go, because we're so we're so used to wanting to control things, and most of the planet has control issues. We've either been controlling, or we've allowed others to control us, and um, or we've been both. And I'd say ninety percent of ninety nine percent of people have uh, have have a bit of both. Um, in them but we can't control this and this is about trust this is all about surrender and, and 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 just surrendering into it and allowing it to flow because this is the divine feminine energy and divine feminine is all about flow and allowing it to flow this is my opinion of it anyway that we're, we're the, but uh, but uh, and but allowing that sacred masculine energy um, as well to come in and, and and combine together so we come into unity and because that really is what it's about what you just said it's actually about the the merger of the divine masculine and divine feminine and it it has occurred and it is occurring and it's allowing people like you said to surrender into that because the more they fight it the worse the the harder it is and, and it's the same uh, I see a lot of and I'm going to say something very controversial. A lot of people who are fighting the control of the governments now who are locking things down or doing this or doing that. And I hate to say this, you still have to let go because it's the harder you fight that lockdown, the worse it is. So mm -hmm. let go just and, and set the intention that for you and for everyone, you know, doing what you can to control it, but getting angry and fighting it is not the way that it's going to get any better. It's not going to get any better for you. It's not going to get any better for the community. So surrendering is really the only thing people can do now. And, and instead, I see a lot of people who are fighting and it's like, just surrender right now. <laughs> just let go right now. And um, that's not surrendering to saying that the government's right. That's surrendering. No, it's not saying they're right at all. It's just saying it is what it is at this moment. And the only, the single only thing you can control is your own state of happiness and your ability to set the intention to share that and share that peace and harmony with everyone around you in ever widening circles. That is what's going to bring the change because I, it's not happening any other way. I say to I also say to to, to to my tribe is do your research know what your know what your rights are research research and be gather the information but when so you know what's right and you know what's wrong because we don't the government the government's 
can if we if we we don't do our research and we know what 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 is right and what is wrong, what is law and what is not law, then um, we're just being as bad as bad as them when we get angry at, at, at it. But when we have an understanding and we share that without people, that to me this is what surrender is. It's it's about sharing it peacefully and going. This is our rights, and and protesting in a in a peaceful way, and and just keep presenting that information and saying, hey, you can't do this. This is not right. This is the law. But we have allowed the governments and doctors and education to, and all of this to take away our rights. We've allowed them to become responsible, and we've just become followers rather than leaders. Yeah, and it's and I think it's. You know, you hit the nail on the head when you talk about doing it peacefully. And I see a lot of people are getting very angry. The anger is not going to help. You can very peacefully protest in many, many ways. And by demonstrating uh, you being at your highest level of consciousness is the single thing that's going to raise everyone else's consciousness around you. So it's that the anger is on a very, very low level. And so helping yourself to step out of that and rise through that is is the greatest thing that's going to help because because when we rise through this to our highest level and we're not sitting in that anger we can actually look down and go oh my god this is just an illusion this is yeah. this yeah um, this is it's just a new way for people to fight with each other and it's just like and highly cut you know highly spiritual people are busy fighting and it's like you're, you're not actually helping no, and I totally agree. And I'm glad you brought that up because I see that so often. They're, they're, um, they've got their, um, they're on Facebook and they're, they're swearing and they're saying this isn't <laughs> right or that's not right. You know, um, we we can all we we can all go through that, but at some point we've just got to become calm and share information. I think the biggest thing that we've got is that we have now got a technology that allows all of us to share a common message. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The technology that we have, we can share that message consistently by saying to people, come back into love. There's only love and, there's, and fear. And fear is the old way of doing things. A new way that we, we, we how we get out of this is, is through love and through connection and being grounded in the present. We've got spiritual people that, and, um, and I'm just going to say this because it's my show and I can. <laughs> um, we've got the spiritual, the spiritualists that are way, way up with the fairies and they've got no mm. idea what's happening on the planet. Yeah. And then we've got those that haven't actually awoken there or, or become aware that there is a higher dimension, that they're on the planet and they're just seeing all this turmoil and, and, and all this anger and that, but it's about bringing the two together. And when we bring the two together, the spiritual and the physical, because that's who we are, we're balanced and we can look at these things in a much more calmer, calmer manner. But the spiritual people aren't balanced because they're not anchored on the planet. I, I agree with you 100%. Not, a lot of people don't want to hear that. <laughs> Well, I mean, and it's like you gotta come back. We're in this body. We incarnated in this body, so you have to use it and you have to take care of it. Doesn't the, doesn't take care of itself. I hate to tell you, unless you help it. <laughs> and the and the ones that haven't that are so far into the fear and that they can't connect, they can't open up to that other side and see it from a different point of view. And I I sit back and I, I just I just look and I look at I am very much an observer of people and it's just like wow well you're very much not not grounded and i'm not judging them with that i'm, I'm able to make an observation which then if yeah. they come to me i can then help them because they're because of where they are and there's so many people saying that why aren't people more aware why aren't they awake well if they're not connected to their, their, their spiritual aspect they're not going to be because they're living in the bottom of the maslow triangle of survival and fear. Yeah. So that's all they're going, and that's all they've known for eons and eons. And then you've got the spiritual people that think they've, they're just here to be spiritual, but we're here to create change in, on a physical level. So they've got no yeah. true idea on what's going on. They're like, oh, just send it all love and light. It, it'll be fine. But, you know, we've got to come down and anchor into, into physicality. I, I agree with you. Yeah, it is, it is exactly that, merging that highest divine, highest connection of self to, to this physical presence where we are. We're on this earth at this moment, and it's taking it to the fullest advantage and expanding that awareness and consciousness as much as possible 
so barbara i have shared where people can find you in the in the comments here um, oh, great. thank you your, your different areas and, and, yeah. and, that. and i'm just going to check my notes that you sent me to make sure um oh, you've got your social media links um now I'm, you've got a um, a giveaway, Conscious Capitalist Blueprint, and I will put that also in the link for people to get that. Oh, um, great! Because there really is a, there really is a path that any business owner can take to grow their business so that they can grow their awareness and their consciousness in their entire community. You know. Yeah, I think it's for me. I think it's amazing where we're heading into that. Um, not everyone's going to want to be. Um, conscious um, capitalists or um, entrepreneurs, whatever they want to want, want, want to call it, but it's we're coming into a place where everybody's going to be equal, and eventually, as we move forward over the years, over generations, money will be a thing of the past because it, it, it was a thing of the past in in Lemuria. We never had money, and you know, there's different ways of yeah, yeah. the way that we think of money. And how, how we do will be um, very, very different. But we're coming into, well, we're in the middle of it. As I was watching a YouTube show the other day and I said, we're in the middle of the photon belt. That's where, we're, we're, where we've got zero point. And in zero point, we can manifest anything. Absolutely. I think people don't realise they have that ability to access that while we're still here. You can yeah. access that. <laughs> and we can manifest whatever we want. So for everyone that's watching the show today, manifest what you do want, not what you don't want. And if you don't want to be in lockdown, manifest that you want to come out of lockdown, manifest what you want and start talking and changing the way because our vibration is words are like spelling. So the more we words we speak, if they're not positive, then we're putting a spell over ourselves and casting a spell over somebody else as well. But as we can turn that around into by casting positive spells and wonderful things for all of humanity. Yeah, and I would I would accentuate that as well. Is I wouldn't even use the word lockdown. I would just I would just keep focusing your awareness on being able to have the freedom of movement and the freedom of time that they've given us. The planet has given us time. Yeah. Which we didn't have before. So use your time wisely. Six months from now, you might be regretting that. Oh my God, I got to go back to work. And go, you know, yeah, and I, you I, might I, be regretting that commute again. So enjoy your time. You've been given a gift of time. And time which we will never, we may never get back, as you said. And I like my, um, I, I do um, personal training twice a week. And my trainer said to me, oh, she said, I actually wish we could go back into lockdown. And I said, why? She goes, because I didn't use it wisely, Sandra. I said, I told her. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I told her. <laughs> and for me, yeah, I had all these big plans. Yes, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then I went, uh, I didn't do any of it. I did what I wanted to do rather than what I thought my business needed or what yeah. I should be doing. Um, in the last eight weeks, I've actually let my business in a way just it, it's just taken it's just taken a back seat because I've wanted to share more and more of this message. I feel it is important um, to, to do that because there's a lot of people out there that that, that that are unaware of it. And the business will always it's coming back, but it's coming back very, very differently in 2021. I know that already because we've got med beds coming out. We've got new technology coming out, which will be released in the next two years and how we do business as far as healers and everything, it's going to be very, very different. And it's really, really exciting to be able to have this new technology that will be released on the planet in the next um, 12 to three, 12, 12 months. To I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send you a link, Sandra, talking to you about, I've got a, a quantum piece generator that's actually on a 65 inch TV that's in the building here and it goes out, it extends out 30 miles, what's that, like 45 kilometers. You know, and the guy who's developed that is uh, a guy named David Adelson who lives in um, California, but he's condensed that down now to um, an Apple MacBook Pro size version, which is a whole lot easier than to try to fit in a 65 inch TV in your house. <laughs> but it, th that's what I installed that right before the lockdown. That's all I'm going to say. And my businesses have been not just surviving, but thriving um, using the principles that I've taught for a long time. But I contribute a lot as well to adding this ginormous quantum 
piece generator. So and I'm, I'm glad, the glad the technology is coming because that's where we're going. We're taking quantum leaps. Um, yeah. and we've got, you know, the, the new quantum financial system coming. Everything as if you listen to what's being said, quantum, the, the word quantum is being used in by so many people because that's where we're going. It's a quantum leap for all of humanity, but not just humanity, but for our universe, our galaxy and other other places because we're just a test run here on Earth. They look at us and they're just waiting for us. Yeah. Uh, earthlings and i'm sure at times they must look down and go oh when are you earthlings going to get it you know but we yeah. uh, the universe has been waiting for us to get it right here yeah i think in it and it's uh, it's going to happen it's happening it's happening as we speak and i invite everyone to be part of the group that it's happening for first because it feels really good when you're in flow and you're in sync with your highest consciousness yeah, not and and not your ego because the ego will only feed you. Fear. Oh, ego will lie to you. Yeah, <laughs> ego yeah. will lie to you. <laughs> and, and and I like it because when I'm in um, resistance, if I'm resistance to some, if I'm res being resistant to something, then I'm in ego. I'm not in flow, and yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm not I'm not connected to my higher self. I'm not connected to the better part of the planet. I'm in resistance, which is also fear. Uh, and I'm finding through this COVID, uh, what what's happened for me is um, all that's gone. It's just like, yeah, just 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 bring it on, yeah, whatever. And someone's, you know, you just go, yep, that's fine. And people, I go, to, I go to the markets, and people say to me, oh, how come you're so happy? And you know, all this. I'm like, I don't see it. I think at times I live in another dimension because in my life, none of that is happening because yeah. I'm I'm not allowing it to happen, or not allowing it is probably not the right word, but. I just don't I just don't see it. I look at something as going, oh well, you could call it that, but you could also call it that. So I, I, I flip it around to a positive a positive thing. And you know, um, my daughter's got to wear a mask when she goes to, to work and she said, Mum, unless I this they tell me to put it on, she says, I don't put it on. Mm. She said, That's my choice. She said, I'm not going to be a follower. She said, but if they ask me to put it on, she said, I will. But she said 90% of the time they don't ask me. So she she doesn't resist and say, no, no, I'm not going to wear it. If you ask me, I'll, I, I will I will do that. And I think this is something that we all need to be aware that if we, to stand up for ourselves is to actually um, do it in such, in, in our own personal power and, and yeah. just challenge it and see, see if, if it's not sitting right with you. In some instances, you do, you know, masks are, are, are necessary, but, you know, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother yeah, story. Yeah, that's a whole, <laughs> whole nother story is what it does to your <laughs> immunity and everything. But what I want to, before we leave, what I want to say to people is don't call people sheep because they may not be awake. They're just like us at some point you know they haven't gone through their, their dark side of their soul or that they're, they're, they're unaware they're, they're caught up in fear and just keep dropping little seeds for them to become aware and take their journey and their next leap and when we as we move through this passage that we're going through be there for them in such a compassionate loving way rather than say i told you so because they're going to need us <laughs> they're truly going to need us. Yeah. more people are going to need um the help of those that are awake as we transition through this and different things come out it's really important to stay in that heart-centered compassion for others because otherwise we're, we're slipping ourselves back into that other room which we where we don't want to go as humanity no absolutely the world's ready for people to stand up in their own power and their own from their own highest best most conscious beautifully vibrant loving self <laughs> that's what the world needs and before we go barbara where can people find you if they want to can I've, I've dropped that in there is is it your website the best place facebook or for i've got people that watch from tasmania so um where oh can cool they, yeah so where yeah can so they, so facebook or linkedin are the places to find me and it's barbara longay l-o-n-g-u-e so I'll put that, I'm going to put your name up so people can see it and they can write that 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 down. So um, that's where you can find Barbara. Do they want to do your meditations? How do they just find you through your uh, It's the, the Vortex Healing Center, spelled Ooh. the Aussie way. Vortex, Vortex Healing Center 7215. 
cool. Is the Facebook page. Yeah. So there's a lot of information on there. We do some live. I do a lot of little mini mindfulness sessions on there, which I really enjoy a lot because I think it's really to me about bringing people back to that present moment as often as possible. So in one to three minutes, you can be in a whole different state of consciousness very, very quickly. You don't have to go live on a mountaintop like I choose to. You can go, you can just be yourself and be more of your highest self at any time, at all times. I think you said the key word there, and, I, and for everyone that's watching, be present. Yeah. Be present in the moment because when we're not present, we're not seeing what, what, what's happening around us. And 2020 is all about vision. And 2020 vision, it's showing us what we don't want. It's showing us what we do want. And when we're present, we can clearly, clearly see that. Yeah, I agree with you. Well, I really appreciate your time today, Sandra. We had a tough time figuring out how to get on a call together. And I'm really pleased uh, that you had me. So cool. And thank you for joining me. And for everyone that's watching, join me next Wednesday when I'm talking with Bob. And we're talking about depression next week. So totally different topic. We jump from topic to topic and do all sorts of things with amazing people on here. So thank you for giving up your time, Barbara, to um, to speak to my audience and my tribe. And I know that they would have got some amazing things out of our conversation. And I would just like to say that I can feel your energy and you have an amazing energy and I can feel the love and everything that you do, that you do for the best of humanity. And, um, yeah, I, I, I hope we can connect um, more. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, we'll stay in touch. All right. Thank you, everybody. Right. We'll see Thanks, you next Sandra. week.